Greetings, it's July 25th and we'll take a look at the heat detections and make a comparison between yesterday and today. But I was out changing irrigation lines last night and suddenly I heard this growl. That's got to be one of the most unnerving sounds I've ever heard. Especially when it's dark and you can't see very well. So I backed off and turned the sprinkler off so he could pass and uh, without getting his paws wet. Just goes to show you that rush hour never stops in the woods. We'll take a look at the area south of Spence's Bridge which was also very busy last night. Uh, but first let's just scan a few places in the province. Uh, this is southern BC. We're looking at Arrow Lakes on the left hand side of the screen and uh, Kootenai Lake on the right hand side of the screen. In the cent just to the right of center is Nelson. And it was not as uh, expansive last night. Uh, there was aging in place so it's hard to see any change or movement in those infrared. Now we're looking southeast of Okanagan Falls and we're looking at the fire to the east of Oliver and east of Osuius at the bottom of the screen. And here's the change into today. The intensity within the fire zones is still moving east, but that eastern perimeter does not appear to be expanding. So that's a, a good sign that it's being held on that eastern flank. We've jumped northwards to the White Rock Lake Fire. This is southwest of Westwold, Falkland, and Highway 97 uh, going into today. Uh, again, just aging in place uh, despite uh, potential winds coming from the southwest. Uh, things seem to be holding in that forested block just north of the valley. There's some intensity on the north and south perimeters of these fires as those winds come in and kind of fan out, but it's good to see that northeastward movement being held back. We've now moved to the fire that's east of Lytton. Uh, we can see Lytton on the left-hand side of the screen. Spence's Bridge is towards the north. Uh, these are the images from yesterday. Uh, we can see that approach to the north. It was almost at the third bend in the road moving south from Spence's Bridge on Highway 8. And here is today. Less intensity on the southern flanks and the western flanks. Those appear to be held, but that northern flank is showing movement uh, further up Highway 8 towards Spence's Bridge and if we zoom in there's a park or a picnic ground right at the top of Highway 8 and the infrared appears to be uh, right up against the south entrance of that. We can see some spots that have moved northeast of Highway 8 but it's difficult to verify with this data. You'll want the ground report. Go to BC Wildfire in the links in the description below and find out what the situation is for this area. We're moving north to the Tremont Creek Fire. This is east of Ashcroft and Cache Creek. Uh, we can see intensity on that southern flank and the one to the southwest. Uh, when we roll into today's infrared, there has been movement southeastwards into these forested blocks in the lower portion of the screen and the winds may be coming slightly from the northwest here even though it's only a short distance north of the fire approaching Spence's Bridge winds appear to be moving in a slightly different direction. We've moved north to the Bonaparte area. This is Young Lake at the top of the screen, Chris Creek close to the bottom of the screen, uh, high heums over on the left hand side of the screen, Bonaparte on the right, and there was intensity yesterday, it was looking hot, and today it does look cooler. Uh, not any apparent expansion, aging in place. There could be some slight movement east of Chris Creek, uh, moving to the southeast. Uh, looks like a, about the distance of one VIIRS indication, which is about 375 meters. We've moved west now. We're looking at the Flat Lake Fire, uh, sp specifically down at the lower portion of the screen. This is just north of Cunningham Lake. I did get a VIIRS notice on NASA's fire alert system I'm monitoring the chasm area just to the south and a couple of these infrared that we see on the lower portion of the screen popped up in 
that uh, scan area. We've moved east now to the Shushwap area. We can see Adams Lake up at the top of the screen on the left hand side. Sycamuse is just left of center. When we roll into today, there is movement east and northeastwards very subtly, just a few uh, indications, but nothing that would signify a breakout or a a great expansion in these fire zones. If we zoom into the Sycamuse area, we're looking southeast of Sycamuse, uh, east of Mara Lake, and there we have the change for today. Uh, less infrared, and that's not snow in those uh, open patches of ground. That's just the background image was taken at an earlier point in time. Let's jump over to Windy now. We're looking at the NAM uh, weather forecast. Uh, it updates very slowly. That's why we see that unscanned portion of the screen at the top. It does allow us to see more localized weather and uh, that can be valuable if uh, wind patterns are changing frequently. We can see six kilometers an hour from the southwest in around the 70 mile house area and then 13 kilometers from the north down in the Oliver Osuyas area. Uh, up towards White Rock Lake and south of Kamloops, we see southwest at 14 kilometers an hour. So in the higher elevations up on the mountains, uh, brisker winds and down in the South Okanagan, they can fan and start coming from the north. If you click the down arrow on one of those flags, you'll get the weather forecast for that uh, weather model. And at the bottom of the screen, you can see the different weather models. I have icon selected. That gives a more general area and region to cover. There's also a compare button at the bottom. And if you click on that, you'll see a group of weather models all stacked up and you can make a comparison between each one. So we're looking at winds from the southwest fairly consistently in the evenings. They might start coming more from the south. Uh, gusts in the afternoon can reach as high as 40 kilometers an hour. It's all going to depend on your location and what the elevation is, what some of the surrounding terrain is. Here we're looking at the area south of Spence's Bridge and it's showing winds from the southeast at one kilometer an hour, so virtually still and hopefully this is occurring on the ground. You will want to check with those ground reports, find out uh, what activity is being done there. However, we have experienced some relative calm around the central portion of the province over the last few days. And as viewer Paul, who spends a lot of time out in the woods, uh, uh, traveling back and forth, he has commented that, uh, yes, it is calmer out there. The winds are not as strong this year as we've seen in previous years. And I'd agree with that just looking at the data. So I'm going to go out and check on my irrigation lines and hopefully my helper has taken the day off. Thank you very much for watching. Be safe. It's wildfire season. And I'll be back to check on some of those heat detections south of Spence's Bridge. Keep your nose to the breeze.